everybody and welcome back to my channel and welcome to another video um, at last you're probably saying another one at last um, yeah I've been pretty busy uh, I've had a lot going on and plus I'm still trying to do my gearbox in my 100e um, you know like I said I've just been doing a little bit after work most nights trying to do a little bit on the model restoration, try to do a little bit on the prefect and like I say I've had other things to do so I apologise for um, you know rather a lot more time than usual elapsing between my videos but there might be you know a couple more big gaps like this until I can sort of get back on track with, with the restorations so I hope you'll bear with me. Right so um, with this video, <coughs> it's a Code 3 and it's a Bedford TK and um, it's one that I've done for my mate in England's birthday um, and it's he, he's the guy that I did the Siku concrete mixer f uh, for, he sent that to me to do so. Um, but this, this one it was um, an old dinky dust cart to start with and I've converted it um, to look not not completely like but virtually like because the cab is the older cab than what my mate lorry was. So it's, it's converted to look like the lorry that he had when I first met him. And... Um, I believe this one got stolen whilst he was watching Bedrack actually at the time um, and it later turned up in pieces in a scrapyard um, so anyway I've had my photo with him years ago in the 80s taken in front of this lorry which I'll show you later and this is what this Code 3 is trying to replicate so it's, it's roughly the lorry he used to have and it's going to be a belated birthday present for him because his birthday was a few weeks ago and I, I missed the deadline completely. I did think I had started it early enough but I missed the deadline completely. So um, anyway, it's going to be a, a late birthday present so I hope he will like it. Right, so enough waffle. Let's get on with this restoration. And... Um, as I always say, please sit back, relax, enjoy watching the video, see how I got on with this one. Okay, let's take a closer look at this. Um, now, this is a uh, coat three, so um, it was a dust cart, so it's not going to go back as a dust cart. So I just wanted to start with a chassis cab. So um, looking at the chassis, it's all good. These rams will come off. This back part that's broken will come off because I don't want that. The cab is very good. It's almost a shame to paint it, but there you are. Um, I need it a different colour. The interior is good. The windows are good. They're just a bit scratched here and there, so that should clean up all right. Um, Shame about the uh, pin going through the fuel tank there. That's going to be a hole there, so I might have to fill that. 
Um, the wheels are good, the tyres are good. So really, everything's good. So this is a, a really good chassis cab for me to do this Code 3. So I'm not going to say what it's going to be yet. Um, you'll see as I go along, but you'll soon, you will soon see what it is. Um, it's going to be nothing complicated. So yeah, let's get on and start dismantling this. Okay, so just file the top of that rivet a little bit to flatten it because it's a pointy one and now I've made a bit of a hole with this punch a bit of a dentation, indentation to uh, drill the rivet so small drill first small drill first it's not a very good drill bit this the bigger one now. If I remember rightly these cabs, the rivet post inside these cabs is not very big. So you'll be very careful. Very easy to blow them out. be a bit careful that's it that's gone you got to be a bit careful with a chassis because they do snap easily right so you see that the rivet post is very very small on this one very easy to cock up okay so let's have a look how they are the interior and the gloss come out okay that will go in my New ultrasonic cleaner. It is actually very clean. I'll chuck it in anyway. Okay. So that's the cab ready for the caustic. Um, I'm just going to file the top edge off of that to straighten it out and then um, I'll drill in with a very small drill bit. Okay, so that's that bit. Um, one thing I did notice on the back wheel, I think this back axle is twisted, but there's also seen, well, there, it seems to be there's quite a lot of wear in that back wheel as well, so it looks like the hole might have been, you know, made bigger than it should be. I don't know, it's something not quite right. So we'll have a look at that. This yeah, I'm going to try and cut those uh, with these grips, not grips, um, cutters, because it, there's no room to file it down. I don't want to damage the chassis, so I don't want this pin. I don't need it, so there you go. That's easily done. And the rams will go into the uh, pot of spares. Spare parts bin. Right, this one I'm going to file because the piece I don't need is the bit on the outside, so I'm just going to file this pin to get it out because I might be able to use it for something else. Uh, 
That's enough, I don't think it's quite enough yet. Oops, see Daisy, everything goes flying. It's almost. There you go, she's coming. Bit of wiggling. The holes on the other side must be smaller than the holes on the first side. There, that's it. Okay, I'll pull it right out after. Um, so I'm going to have to file that, but I might have to use the um, Dremel to get that axle out to just file it around because there's no room. You see, these wheels are quite dished, and uh, there's not much room without damaging the wheel get them out and yeah I want the wheels to be black so I wasn't going to take them off the chassis but I'm going to need to take this one off to see what's going on with that axle okay um, better get on and do that okay so I've done that I'll fold the axle with the uh, rotary tool, that one, so it should come off now, there you go, so there's the bent axle look, so what I'll do I'll straighten it and I'll put it back on and I'll paint it and then I'll paint the whole lot, take the tyres off and paint the whole lot. So we should be able to straighten the axle. Not with those pliers, you see he's done. So we should be able to just straighten the axle like that. Yeah, that's not bad. That'll be alright, I think. That'll be alright. Okie doke. Well, next step, caustic soda and then paint. Okay, so before I put this in the caustic soda, I want to sort of make a bit of a body for it and I want to like test fit it all really you know sort of mock it up before I do do that and strip the paint I mean so I've got this aluminium strip from B&Q um, and I want to put a body on it and I think if I put two bits side by side I'll glue them together two lengths um, they're going to be more or less the right size for the body um, so that's what I'm going to do I'll, I've got another piece that's a bit narrower than this and I'll use it to make like a headboard or gantry whatever you call it um, so I'm going to do that now I'm going to cut the pieces and then I'll stick them together and then you will see where I'm going with this so I'll come back to you when I've done that. Okay, so I've done that. So there it is. Um, that's sort of the basic shape of it. So now you can see what I am going to do here. So that that's that's it basically. It's uh, you know the recovery truck. Um, so I'm going to. Um, 
try and put this in the right place here. So I've got to sort out some brackets and things because really it should be slightly tilting back. So it'll probably go about there. So I've got to sort of tidy it all up. Um, make a sort of a bit of a back on it for the rear lights and that. Um, I'm not sure if I'll cut this bit off yet because it is a bit low but I don't know it might be a way to hold the body on anyway that's that's roughly that's what I'm aiming at so I'm gonna sort of do all the fine tuning um, pretty much get that made up and then um, I'll shove the rest in the caustic soda. I wasn't going to put that in the caustic soda after watching one of Bob Willis's videos. Um, we, well, at the time I'm doing this, it's the latest one that he put on where he just rubbed down the paint. But um, I think I will dip it in caustic because so, it's not going to be very easy to rub that down, rub a, get a surface on it. So. I want the body part to be the same colour so it's better if I strip it down so otherwise I might end up with different shades of black okay so I'm going to get on with that so I'll catch you in the next bit okay so just a bit of a, an update um, as to where I am with this Code 3 model um, what I've done, I've got one of these things off of a bottle of Prosecco, or Prosecco, how do you say it? And um, these, I've cut the actual, this piece off. So, hang on, if I cut it there, like this, I'll show you what I've done. So I've cut this piece off. Now, these little pieces here on the end, these little eyes, what I've done, I've kind of opened them up a little bit. There. Oh, I can't do it now. Actually, that's the wrong one to do because that one's that one's split, that's where the join is. So, hang on, I'll do one of these. So, there, I've opened it up like that to make like the hook shape a little bit more. And I've straightened that piece out. And then I've cut them off like so. Pair of snips, and then I'm left with a little hook. The ones I've done, I've, I've made them a bit more round than that. So I've then glued them onto the underside of this with super glue, so it makes like a, you know, the hooks for tying a car or tractor or whatever is going to be on the back. Now on the back here, it's not 100% straight, but anyway, um, I've got a piece of MIG welding wire and I've bent it around the fit so that it comes over the back like so. And I've got to make another ramp. I haven't finished this one yet. I've got to tidy it up. So I've made this little ramp with this hook, um, again, with a piece of this wire off of one of these, because it's a bit softer, it's easier to bend, and I've made a hook, and that will be the ramp, and it's a couple of cable ties stuck to 
a piece of plastic, see I've got the bits here, so there's a piece of this plastic that held the model into a box and two lengths of cable ties like this and like I say a piece of this wire bent into a hook to hook it over the back of that and then I've just filled in in there I've got to put a bit more in there but it was super glue and baking powder and then I've just filed it so that the end is that shape so that you know that sits on the floor like that and then what I'm going to do on this I'm going to paint it um, black and then I'm going to stick some more of these wooden stirring sticks on like so I'll stick them on so that's what I'm going to do with that to try and make replicate a, a sort of a wooden floor and then after that I've got to try and attach this whoops the cabs come off again attach this onto there so I'll do that I'll make some brackets I'll make some brackets and either rivets or stick them under there and again at the back and I'll use the pins that go through I'll use those pins to hold it on Ideally, I, I want that to be sort of like that. I don't want it flat. I want it a bit tilted like that. Okay, so that's as far as I'm up to at the moment. I've been doing my um, gearbox on my 100E, my Ford Prefect. So I haven't had a lot of time to do, um, you know, any of these model restorations. So I'm just doing 10 minutes here and there which is why I haven't sort of filmed as I'm doing it okay so I'll do a bit more I've got to make like I say another one of these ramps up with these bits um, so I'm going to do that and then um, I'll crack on with making these brackets for underneath here okay right um, I come home from work today and um, I thought I'll do a little bit of this so what I've done I've made these brackets um, to, put, to put this on the chassis I initially glued it onto the <laughs> mud cause I have to clean all that up well that'll go in the caustic soda now anyway um, yeah, so the holes from the dust got um, body that was on this are there, so I thought I'd just well use them. So I've stuck these on with super glue, these brackets I've made, um, drilled the holes. Yeah, super glue and baking powder to start with. I've drilled some holes and I've countersunk them a little bit, and I'm going to put some of the rivets it that we used to put the little thinking corgi cars together so I've countersunk the holes because I want that the wood goes over the top and uh, I'll glue those in and then I might just punch the end down as well as the uh, glue just to make doubly sure to hold that so that you see fits in there I've cut that to the shape of this piece on the chassis. And the other side, the squares, like the square of the tank, so it makes like a back of the diesel tank. It's a bit tight. Um, there. Going in, and then these back ones fits inside the chassis. And uh, I've cut these two pins. Um, from a big rivet, pop rivet, so I'm going to push that through that way, line the hole up, try and push it through that way anyway, and then that will fit, um, fit flush with the tank, I wasn't going to swear then. 
and then this back one as well goes through and that'll fit flush with that and I'll just glue the pin in put both the pins in so that makes it nice and solid and then the old cab see So that's about the right gap. So that's going to make it nice, fairly tidy. So I'm quite pleased with that. Um, the ramps I finished doing them last night. They haven't come out too too bad. I filled them with super glue and well, I showed you what I was going to do: super glue and baking powder, and then I filed them sanded them down, I've made the flat bit that goes on the on the uh, deck and then the two bits of cable tie that I stuck on sort of looks like a, a grippy, grippy surface for the ties of the cars as they go up okay so that's as far as I've got so far so what I'm going to do is put these rivets in. They've got to be careful because this is going to go all the way through the glue. So I'll get these pins out again if I can. That's a bit tight going in there, that one. I don't need my pies to pull them out. Because there's a, a flat part on these rivets and it's just sort of, I could file them but I don't want to make them too loose because if they fit in and they're quite tight to go in they're less likely to fall out even though I'm gluing them. This one is, uh, this one's no problem, this one's quite easy to get out. Okay so... So I'm going to put that, those rivets in there. Oh, I can get the lid off my super glue, it's stuck again. It's coming to the end now, this one. There's not much left in. Right, so... one, a bit more than I stick, I'll just drop the rivet in, another one, if I can pick it up out of the pot, More fingers and thumbs, but another one. And she goes. So that's pretty much flush. So I'll do the same with the back. Give me rivets. Well, I did have four in there, I don't know what I've done, I've lost one now. For goodness sake, see a minute ago. Oh, God. Why do I lose stuff all the time? I had four in this pot. And now I've only got one left and I've only used two. Ah. Okay, I have to get another one. <laughs> Right, about to get another one. God knows where that one went. It's a mystery. So I don't mind if I've got plenty of glue on there. Like I say, this is all going to be covered, so.
Okay, so I'll leave that for a little bit. And then uh, I'm going to squash the ends over or pin the ends over. Okay, that's it. The rivets are squashed down. So that's going to make it quite solid. So it's just a quick clean up and a, and a paint now really for this bit. I've got to sort something out in the back for the lights. I haven't decided how I'm going to do that yet. Right, I've put some bits um, on the bottom at the back there to put the lights on. And I've made a little gantry. A little, I don't know what you call it, for the front. Um, and I've put a little light on the top. So I've got to mask this little light off top of it because the rest has got to be black everything's got to be painted black and um, this is actually the photograph of the one that uh, I'm trying to copy so there's got to be like one of the old trailer boards that goes across there because that's what's on this can just see it there underneath that Morris. That Morris is actually written on the building. You can see the trailer board underneath and then the, the beacon on top. Okay, so and this is a picture of yours truly with my mate in England. So that's that's the lorry I'm sort of trying to recreate. Um, but it, it's an old it's a newer model than than the one that this model is because this model's got the older cab so the Bedford you know instead of being on the grill it's on the front of the cab under the badge and the badge is slightly different and so is the front of the cab this one's got the side lights and indicators on there and no side lights like the older ones like this one's got it's got the side lights still just there um, so there are a few differences but uh, time's a bit of a limit on this so I don't know I don't know if I've got time to change everything even the guard I was thinking to put the guard that goes across the front from the front bumper you can see it on there um, I might still do that I'll see if I've got time okay so that was oof, about 1987 I think that photograph was taken in back shot in Surrey okay so I'm gonna get that light masked off and then go and spray the primer on on the uh, back bit here okay so I've got me masking tape oh, if I can find the edge of it there it is I'm in the wrong place there it is so. actually I should have cut a small piece off there shouldn't I really I don't need that much, but I need a bit more than I've put. Oh, I've lost the piece now. Cut another bit. Oh, 
this way it went, stuck on my finger. Right, okay, I'm going to go and spray that. That's it, primed. So I'm going to go give her a coat of black now. I'll use matte black and then I'll just um, lacquer it after. It'll make it um, shiny. Okay, so I'm just filing these squares off the roof. Um, now it looks a bit rough in a minute. I'm trying to keep the ridges. And then I'm going to fill these holes. Because I want a fairly smooth roof. I don't want those holes in there. So, probably show a little bit. I'll have to smooth that out some more. So uh, I'll smooth that out a little bit and then I'll put it in the caustic soda or vice versa. Right, so what I've just done, I've drilled out these headlights. Um, and then I'm, I'm putting the jeweled headlights in instead. Um, it was a bit tricky on this one. So I'll have to be careful when I put these jeweled headlights in to get them right. But they look a lot better with jeweled headlights than they do with the uh, just the moulded headlights. So they like that, looks a lot nicer. Right, so I've cut all these bits of st uh, stirring sticks from Costa Coffee um, to length and I'm going to glue them onto that now. So, get me super glue. New pot, the other one's gone odd. Cut the top off. That's it. Okay, so let's see how, see how we get on with this. Um, I've had to sand the ends down because I've got the other piece of this bar that goes across the back in there, so I've got to go over the top of that. So, um, I don't really know, put the glue on there I suppose, do it like that maybe, so I'll start with the middle. Hope I get it in the right place. That's going to be a bit of a tricky one. This. I suppose really I should have bent these sticks first. I can see this could get messy. Okay, so I'm going to have to hold that there a bit. Do 
after it dries. Almost done. There. I might put a few pieces across the front there. Right, what I'm trying to do now, I'm trying to recreate the guard that goes across the front on some of the old Bedford TKs. My boss never liked them because he said if you hit catch that in something it will come back and it will bend the cab so he used to take those off if ever he had a TK with those on. So what I'm using is a bit of this um, wire, it's, it's like for soldering but it's like coppery stuff for sort of brazing, soldering, brazing. So I'm cutting into that because it's, it's really it's the same size as what I need roughly. Now I've drilled four holes in the bumper there and one there and one there. So these bits of rod now I'm just cutting some over length bits. I'm going to sand the ends flat like that. And then just cut the length. I know it's too much but it's easier for me to put them on like this. So I cut a length like that. Um, then I'm going to pass it through the hole in the bumper from underneath and if I can <laughs> it's fiddly very fiddly I haven't got those two middle ones quite straight but difficult so pass that through like I say it's very fiddly pass those through and I've got <laughs> a pot of super glue. Oh shit! Excuse my language. A uh, uh, shot glass there, and I put some super glue on the base of it. So I get that on a cocktail stick, and then I just put some on the end of that, and then roughly where it's got to go, put a bit more. And now the battery's getting low on my camera now. I just put that there and then oh I get cramp in my hand jeepers I'm going to try and just oh if I can oh it's not easy when I've got cramp oh jeepers just at the wrong time 
Okay, so I'm just going to hold that there for a little bit. Just till it sets a little bit. Yeah, that's enough. Oh, <laughs> my hand's all cramped up. Okay. Jeepers. Um, I haven't got quite the got the distance quite right but that's it so I'm going to do the other one and then I'll take it properly or well, I'll glue it properly and then chop them to the right length because obviously they've got to be flush inside otherwise um, you know I won't be able to get the base on the chassis onto the or the cab onto the chassis so I'm going to carry on doing that whilst I'm charging the battery in my camera and I'll come back to you when it's done. So now for the old caustic soda. Here it goes. I'll leave that in there for a few minutes. Um, the cab may be rolled off, look. Uh, give it a bit longer for the black to come off. Seems to be uh, taking a bit longer for that. And uh, we'll come back to it when it's uh, all cleaned up my wheels. I'm ready for paint. Okay, so we'll catch you in a bit. Alright, so the caustic soda's done its job. Um, I've cleaned that up and wiped it with meths, methylated spirit, and I've just dropped the bloody thing on the floor. Wiped it with methylated spirits, and um, I'm going to go out and spray some primer on it now. The cab I've cleaned as well. But I've had to fill the holes, so I've done that and I'm going to leave that dry overnight and then tomorrow I'll sand it down and then I'll give that a coat of primer as well. Okay, so I'm going to go out and prime the chassis. Okay, see when that's done. Okay, so I've got the cab it's primed here, so I'm going to put a, a thin coat of yellow on it. I'm using the spray booth because it's pissing down with rain outside. I was going to say pouring, well I was going to first say pissing, then I was going to say pouring. It came out as you heard. Okay, pouring down with rain outside, so I'm going to chance using this spray booth. It's going to make a bit of a smell indoors, but my missus are still at work, so it should be alright. should be gone by the time she comes on. Okay, here we go. Go off a little 
back off and then I'll give it another coat. Right, so I need to mask off now. Um, in line with the uh, top of the bumper. So the bits that are normally black there, they're usually black rubber. So I'm going to mask off black level with the bumper and then all the top of the cab because the, the mud guards are black, all this lower half is black. So in line with the top of the bumper and then the mud guards is black right the way across. The rest is yellow. So I've got to mask all the top of the cab off. Okay, so that's <laughs> that's it more or less done. Um, sorry, I'm going out of shot. So let's see. I'm going to give it some lacquer first to try and reduce the uh, risk of it bleeding through when I put the black. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now I've made uh, the, these side lights on here. I'm afraid I, I got carried away and I went and did it uh, off camera. Unfortunately I've made one slightly bigger than the other and I only really noticed properly when I put them on. So I'm afraid they'll have to stay like that. Um, I know I've done these side lights here which it wouldn't have had if it had these indicators and side lights um, but anyway I got the best of both worlds <laughs> so I've done a bit of um, black wash in the grill not great my first time trying to do that um, what I've got left to do is Red inside the line, um, not line, um, what the heck they call it, the Bedford, what's on the Bedford badge, I've forgotten, is it Phoenix or something? Um, I've got to do red inside, so I've done a bit of silver around, a bit of molotov around the outside the edge, but the later badges had red in the middle, which is roughly what I'm trying to replicate, you can see it there. So that's uh, what I'm trying to do there. Um, the mirror, the mirrors, I sort of made them out of some square jeweled um, like the like the jeweled headlights, but square ones. And um, I've painted the jeweled part, and then just molotov the back. That's the bit that normally sticks onto whatever. And then I put a blob of five second fix on each side to make like the uh, bit that holds it to the mirror arms. The mirror arms I've just made out of the um, MIG welding wire. Right. Um, What's next? The jeweled headlights, that's what I'm going to put in there. Um, so I'm going to put a, a blob of this glue. Um, it's called Gem Tack. I got it on eBay. But I'd stuck a pin in the top to stop it going hard. And the pin went rusty and made that horrible colour in there. So I'll just stick a cocktail stick in there and um, use that. And this does actually dry clear. So unlike the super glue, it doesn't cloud the jeweled headlights. So that's what I've taken to using now. So we're going to have a go at putting these in. Um, 
put my glasses on and better move this photograph. So I put a bit on the cocktail stick. In the bottom, right. I'll put the lid back on that. Right now for the fiddly bit. See if I can uh, do it without dropping them on the floor. Cool, I lost that one already. Boom. I'll just put them both in loosely and then I'll press them in after that's if I can pick this darn thing up it's uh oh it picks up when it's upside down I'm gonna pick it up the right way around Blah. okay so too bad. I did the uh, edges of the lights with a monotol to make light chrome bits. Okay so I'll leave that dry and then uh, we'll come back and do the next bit. It's starting to look like a proper TK now. Okay catch you in a bit. Okie doke, so I've done the badge in red, uh, like the later ones, um, and I've put the guard on the, well the grill guard or light guard, whatever it is, the guard on the bumper. Um, with hindsight I could have perhaps used something slightly smaller gauge than that. It's a little bit on the thick side, um, but it still looks all right. So it's all ready now to put back together. So let's get on with that. Okie doke. So let's move that to one side. We'll start off with the cab. The window unit. I haven't dipped it. I've just done it with a nail buffer and otosol. Um, then that's it. So I put that in, just drops in. I drilled the holes a little bit bigger for it in the top there because the uh, filler that I used to fill those holes in the roof came through a little bit. So rather than risk knocking them out again. Um, I just drilled the holes a bit in the plastic window unit, sort of to go for the for the bits that have come through to go through the ho the holes in the uh, windscreen unit. If you see what I mean. Sorry, I'm getting a bit <laughs> thinking what I've got to say. Right, so we put that in. I think that looks okay. White interior, I know it should have been black, probably with the dashboard in yellow. Although some of the later ones did have a black sort of vinyl -y dashboard. Right, so we put that 
little tongue through the groove. There's a groove in the front there. So we put we'll put that uh, on. I keep moving the windscreen. It's a bit awkward this one. That's it. So in there, and then. Let's snap that in. Oh, she's been temperamental now. She's been temperamental. There, that's gone. So we're going to put a bit of glue in there. Okay, we'll put a bit of glue on the pot. Plenty in there. Right. for a minute or so right let's get the back on so I've got to push this on line this these two holes up with that hole there goes through the diesel tank and these two holes with the back ones on here so I've got to be careful because they're tight to get in so I don't want to scratch the paint just rock it gently A tight fit. Now the longer pin will go through the front one. Trying to line it up. Easier said than done. Easier said than done. I think I can get it through. That's it, that's gone. That's gone. So I'm going to put a bit of glue in there to hold it inside, like inside the diesel tank. Because I don't want to be peening any ends. I thought about it and then I thought, no, I'll file the end of the pin. I'll file the end of the pin down so that it's level and then uh, I'll 
just touch the end up with black paint to disguise it because it look a bit daft on the on the side of the diesel tank like that otherwise okay so that's that pin in so we're getting the we're getting the now I've got to get the back one in so I'll put it through from the same side I've got to be careful not to break these mirror arms off Nothing fits so well and it's a code three. <laughs> nope, sorry. It all went through okay before I painted it. Okay, I'm going to try and get that through and then I'll come back to you. Okay, well I've got it in eventually. Um, and I've glued it inside in, in place there. So that's done. Um, I've also I made these little water slide decals with my mate's name on. Initial and name. Um, he didn't actually have that, the name on the side of his TK um, but I thought I'd put it on as an added touch so that's basically it uh, I've got this car which has been in a crash so I've just sprayed a bit of lacquer on it um, and then I'll find a way of strapping it on the back of there it'll make a good good load and uh, there's the little ramps so I'm going to go out and do some outdoor shots of it and then we'll stick it back on the turntable and compare before and after so thank you very much everybody for watching this video I hope you've enjoyed it um, <laughs> It's been a couple of months it's taken me to do this, uh, you know, because like I say, I've been busy with the Prefect gearbox, which I still haven't uh, finished, so the last part came the um, day before yesterday, so I'm going to have to start putting that back together. So that's the reason was, you know, doing that, and I've had a lot of other things on my plate lately, so that's the reason why I've kind of missed one of my um, you know restoration videos I've kind of missed the dates that I normally put them on every every other Tuesday so it might be like that for a couple more of the videos they might be more spaced out until I've got more time again but hopefully I can get back on track in not to distant future okay so thank you very much as I say for watching this video and um, if you have enjoyed it then please join me again next time whenever that will be um, for another video so until then everybody take care look after yourselves and uh, we'll see you next time cheery for now Bye.